When you think of a pet to get for a child, one of your first thoughts might be a hamster. But for many reasons, they may not be the best option. So today's video is mainly directed at both kids wanting a pet hamster, as well as parents considering getting their kid one. Now, of course, this is not me saying that children can't own hamsters at all. I know plenty of kids who are way more responsible and mature than a lot of the adults that I know. But still, in many cases, a hamster may not be the best pet to choose. For example, if your parents are not animal people or they hate rodents, or they've already said no to getting a hamster, consider waiting. Often what happens is bringing a hamster or any pet really into that type of environment is going to end up being very stressful for you and the pet. Are you going to be able to provide everything that they need? I get a lot of comments from kids whose parents will not allow them to properly care for their hamster. They won't let them upgrade their hamster's enclosure. And if their hamster is sick, they refuse to take them to the vet, which in the end is going to end with the hamster suffering. This statement also goes to parents. Please don't ever tell your child who does not have a steady income to provide the things for their pet that they are 100% responsible for the pet because that is unfair. If your child wants a pet, you have to be prepared to be 100% responsible if the child becomes uninterested or if the pet needs new supplies, more supplies, proper supplies, you have to upgrade their enclosure, or if they become ill, you have to take them to the vet. Now on to specifically why I wouldn't consider a hamster to be the best pet for a child. Hamsters are nocturnal slash crepuscular, so this is a big thing to consider. Now, not every hamster's sleep schedule is going to be exactly the same. You can range from a hamster who is going to be waking up at 5 p.m., which is great, but you could also end up with a hamster who's not going to wake up till 12 a.m., 1 a.m., pretty late like that. Now, for a lot of children, they may have a curfew or a time where they have to go to bed by, or they may not even be able to stay up that late to be able to interact with their hamster. And so they're likely never going to actually get to see their hamster. It also isn't ideal for them to be waking their hamster up during the day just so that they can interact with them. Hamsters are nocturnal. There's no changing that. If you want a pet that is gonna fit their lifestyle and sleep schedule, look into a pet that isn't nocturnal. Not to mention that if you have the hamster's enclosure in your child's room, hamsters can be pretty loud. So unless your child is a hard sleeper, your hamster may end up keeping them awake a lot. Hamsters take up more space than you would think. They're not just going to conveniently sit on your child's nightstand. You're going to need a space with at least 20 inches by 40 inches in order to provide them with all of the enrichment that they need. Pet store cages often do not have enough space, leading to bored hamsters who either are very inactive and just will only run in their wheel, or a hamster who is constantly chewing on the bars and climbing because they are trying to escape. If you're thinking the most you'll ever spend on a hamster is $100, you sadly are mistaken. For just an appropriately sized enclosure, you're easily going to be spending between $100 and $200, and that's not even including enrichment or possible cage upgrades in the future because your hamster needs more space. That's not including bedding and food that you're going to have to consistently buy throughout their life. And that's not even including vet care if they get sick or injured, which hamsters are exotic animals, so they can't see a traditional dog and cat vet they have to see an exotic vet, which sometimes can be more pricey. So while hamsters do have shorter lifespans, so you're not going to be spending nearly as much money as a dog or cat, you still are going to be spending a significant amount. Hamsters can be unpredictable and bite pretty hard when they want to. Hamsters are nothing like dogs and cats, and they have not been domesticated for nearly as long. Therefore, when you bring a hamster home, you're likely going to have to get them used to human interaction. And even then, sometimes a hamster will literally want nothing to do with you and would prefer to be just watched from afar. Even the most tame hamster can still suddenly decide to bite you if they're scared or upset. Mabel, my very tame hamster, 
took a, a nice chomp out of my pinky when I tried to stop her from lifting her playpen because she just did not want me to stop her from doing that. So if you're somebody who's deciding to just stick their hand in the, your hamster's enclosure when they're sleeping and try to take them out, be prepared to get bitten because they're not scared to bite you. Biting is one of their only defense mechanisms. So if they are angry or, or upset, you're, you're gonna get bit. Hamsters also aren't the cuddliest pets. They're not just gonna sit there and want to be pet. And while of course there are some hamsters who are like that, they may be calmer, they'll let you hold them for longer periods of time and they may like to be petted, that's not the case for the majority of hamsters. Most of the time, they're going to be extremely fast. They're gonna to wanna to zoom around and explore things, and they probably aren't gonna to wanna to just lay with you. So for many kids, this might be frustrating if they just want a pet they can relax with. Hamsters are pretty small and fragile animals, especially since they lack that depth perception. So they could jump from your hands at any moment if you're not being careful enough when holding and interacting with them. Because if they decide that they no longer want to be held or they get spooked, they will jump because they, they can't tell how far the fall is. And if they are really high up, that could result in a serious injury. Due to their size and speed, it's very easy that a hamster could get squished. So if you have young children who are not very gentle, it's really important that they are being supervised when interacting with the hamster. Hamsters are also very good escape artists. It's important that once the hamster goes back into their enclosure, that the lid is secure and closed. It's very easy to get distracted and forget to close the lid, and then you can wake up the next morning with a missing hamster. And because hamsters are so small, trying to find them can be a daunting task and sometimes people won't even find their hamsters because they may end up in a small crack or crevice in your home. Hamsters on average only live one and a half to two years and sometimes for unknown reasons they may even pass sooner than that. Death can be a really hard topic to discuss or even process for a young child. So it's going to depend on whether or not you're ready to have that talk with them yet. Personally, I know a lot of parents who get hamsters for their children and they one day suddenly die. And instead of having the talk, they just go out and they buy a new hamster and just replace the old one. And I just, I, I don't think that's necessarily right in my opinion. I think you should either be able to have the talk about death or don't get a pet that has such a short lifespan. For many parents, the lifespan of a hamster may also be a deal breaker for how much they want to spend on them. Countless times have I been told how pointless it is to spend so much money on something that isn't going to live a long time. But if that's how you feel about a life, I think you should go with a different pet. The lifespan of a living thing does not determine their worth. You wouldn't see a person who is terminally ill and only has maybe a couple months to live and say, wow, why are they doing that? That's so pointless, they're going to die. No matter how long you live on this earth, you should still be able to have all of the things you need to be happy and live out the rest of your life. In the end, if you are a parent and you've decided to get your child a hamster as their first pet, I see no issue with that as long as you are involved with teaching them how to properly care for the hamster, how to properly interact with them with supervision, and are going to take full responsibility of the extra costs and care it may take to have a hamster. If you are a child watching this and you still want to get a hamster, I also see no issue with that. As long as you have fully recognized all of the things that I've talked about or you have no issues with them, you're able to provide your hamster with everything that they need and your parents are not going to be an issue and they're going to allow you to take them to the vet. And if you don't have a steady income, they are willing to pay for things like taking them to the vet or upgrading their enclosure. I think that is fine. If your parents are not okay with that and you don't have a steady income yourself, I would consider waiting to get a hamster because trust me, 
if you get a hamster and you're not going to be able to give them the proper care that they need or take them to the vet if they're extremely ill, you are going to feel so extremely guilty. So I hope this video has made the decision a little bit easier on whether or not you should get your kids a hamster. So I will see you in my next video. Bye.